Good afternoon. Uh, hi, um, my name is Harry Bizzari. I'm the VP of the uh, Emerging Contaminant for RJD Group. And today uh, we are going to be talking an unconventional uh, topic, uh, terpenes uh, detection and air and sampling in air uh, uh, by combining traditional technologies and new real-time monitoring using the PTRMS. Uh, next slide, please. You know, in the uh, recent uh, uh, years, with the uh, uh, legalization of the hemp and uh, medical marijuana or cannabis uh, in the, uh, for that purpose, you know, there is a lot of uh, uh, news is coming out about uh, the terpenes and uh, the cannabis and how the industry is growing. And this is actually we are we are we're going to be exploring in this uh, uh, presentation what are the effects of these terpenes could be uh, in air. So before we start, let's talk about uh, terpenes. What are the terpenes? Ter terpenes are thousands of terpenes found in the planet kingdom. Uh, more than 100 terpenes are found in the cannabis sevia plant species. This is the same species that you get hemp um, and medical marijuana from it. Uh, and concentration of the terpenes in uh, cannabis stevia plant varies as they go through their life cycle during the growing, during the harvesting, during driving. And, and terpenes have, uh, have a high tendency of uh, degradation and evaporation during the storage. Uh, right now, there are uh, uh, approximately 200 terpenoids are found in the uh, uh, cannabis plants. Next slide, please. Now, the terpenes, you know, there, there has not been any kind of study done that the terpenes are uh, 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 toxic, uh, true, uh, uh, to toxic. But, you know, and uh, actually the, 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 there are a lot of studies that are done. Actually, some of these terpenes uh, uh, could have a really a good medicinal uh, 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 purposes. But the fact is that uh, 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 these uh, terpenes, uh, uh, the presence of them actually they act like a, uh, any kind of uh, VOC. In the presence of the sun, uh, sunlight, VOC-like terpenes can react with uh, another air pollutant called nitrogen oxide, actually. And this reaction uh, uh, in the airborne particulate matter uh, it produces the aerosol or ozone, uh, and which are both. When I mean, you look at the uh, uh, Clean Air Act, and actually it is a pollutant for Clean Air Act. There is a lack of knowledge about the data from the VOC emission of uh, of the uh, terpenes from the cannabis industry. No study has been done, but one study has been done in Denver, actually, in uh, Denver County, that increase in terpene concentration affected the local uh, atmospheric chemistry and air quality uh, in, uh, in the area. And, and that was uh, shown by increase of the ozone, ozone, ozone concentration by as much as 0.34 uh, parts per billion during the day and 0.67 parts per billion at night. Next slide, please. Now, uh, you know, uh, we, as we mentioned earlier, uh, the the uh, the market uh, for the hemp and uh, medical uh, marijuana in the last five or ten years uh, is uh, it has increased tremendously. So what the issues that you know is that you know uh, is going to create some, some environmental issue. The hemp market by, by itself. They, they estimate that could be much, much uh, uh, bigger than the cannabis, uh, uh, medical cannabis uh, market, especially with the hemp market, uh, with the uh, 2018 farm uh, legislation that was uh, passed uh, that has uh, uh, made hemp legally uh, legal through the whole country. Some of the things we could get out of the hemp industry is the hemp seed, hemp oil, hemp fibers, the CBD, or, uh, CBD hemp oil, and the application are wide uh, all over. They could be used in food, in beverage, in personal care product, in textile, 
in pharmaceutical. And uh, it is estimated that the market for hemp uh, in the next four or five years is going to be uh, be five times higher. Uh, the, the hemp market in 2019 uh, was about close to uh, 4.6 uh, billion, and they estimate that is going to be up to 26.6 uh, uh, billion by the year 2025. 20, uh, Next slide, please. Now, the plan, when we talk about hemp, and uh, medical marijuana, the plants are the same. As we explained earlier, it's a stevia plant. And this plant, the only difference between the medical marijuana and hemp is the amount of the THC in, these, uh, in, in, in the plants. So the, uh, uh, it, or if it is less than 0.3% uh, or not. So U.S. cannabis market actually uh, uh, reached to, uh, is going to reach uh, to $26 billion by 20, 20, uh, 2025. Right now, 33 states have legalized cannabis in various degrees, uh, varying degree. Uh, the 14 states have approved use of the product for non hallogenic uh, compounds uh, like a CBD cannabinoid. As I mentioned, the Farm Bill of the 2018, uh, it, it really it may, uh, made this thing. Uh, um, uh, totally illegal. Next slide, please. Now, when it comes to the uh, uh, analysis of the terpenes uh, in air, uh, we love to look at it uh, two different ways. Um, one is the hemp industry. The hemp is usually is being cultivated outside. Uh, they are not going to be cultivating hemp uh, inside. But the medical marijuana is cultivated uh, uh, inside uh, uh, during the greenhouses. So our our, our uh, approach uh, with uh, in uh, our jelly, uh, uh, we are uh, recommending two different uh, uh, technology uh, uh, for measuring the concentration of, of the turbines in air. One is using a real-time analysis by the PTRMS. This is for outdoor, and then you know it could be in the mobile lab. Uh, I'll talk more about the PTRMS. What is the technology? And one is the indoor, actually, for the cannabis industry using the more traditional methods like a TO15 and TO17. Next slide, please. Now, what is the PTR, uh, PTRMS? Uh, PTRMS stands for uh, Proton Transfer Reaction Mass Spectrometry. It enables simultaneous real-time detection, monitoring, and quantification of the volatile compound present in ambient air, such as acetone, acetaldehyde, methanol, uh, ethanol, benzene, toluene, xylene, and not turbines. Uh, RJD has successfully used and used uh, their, uh, our mobile uh, uh, lab for PTRMS for a variety of the project for various uh, 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 volatile uh, compounds. And now we are able to uh, offer that uh, for turbines. The H3O ion do not react. Oh, sorry, uh, H3O ion do not react with the major uh, component present in the clean air due to the low proton affinity. The PTM, uh, uh, PTRMS does not dilute the sample containing low anionic concentration of the uh, with the carrier gas, and then that does not lose reagent ion when traveling to the mass filter uh, between ion source and the uh, drift tube. As a result, using the PTRMS, we really we could uh, 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 detect various volatile compounds in parts per trillion levels at a very low range. Next slide. But now here, uh, uh, but, uh, you, uh, you see uh, some of the monoterpenes actually, and by using the PTRMS real uh, time monitoring of the terpenes at one second incre increment, measuring device provide a highly accurate and producible results. Uh, uh, is a perfect tool for variety uh, of the uh, uh, tracking the variable emission uh, from these uh, terpenes into the atmosphere. Next slide. Here uh, uh, we show actually uh, one of the uh, uh, alpha pinene is one of the terpenes. Uh, 
and we have uh, detected that uh, uh, by using a, a, a PTRMS. And as you could see, uh, two masses are distinct for uh, this uh, on the fragmentation pattern. One is the mass to charge ratio of 81, and one was the mass to charge of 137. By measuring these two masses, actually, we could measure uh, alpha uh, pinene using a PTRMS at the two, a very low concentration. Next slide, please. And here, actually, you see uh, uh, the red one is the uh, the calibration uh, for the mass 81, and the uh, black one is the uh, calibration uh, for uh, 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 mass 137. Again, as I mentioned, the detection limit it could go down to the 200, uh, 250 parts per trillion for uh, either one for uh, using either one of these uh, masses. Next one. Another one is actually uh, beta carophyllin or alpha humulin. Uh, to these are some of the, is there not more, more uh, uh, there are polyterpenes, there are not uh, monoterpenes anymore. And as you can see here uh, on the next slide, Uh, as you can see, uh, you can see here with the beta car uh, filing, you see a lot of different masses here. You have uh, the fragmentation pattern. Uh, uh, you see a lot more fragmentation because of the uh, the R uh, uh, than the monoterpenes. But again, here you have we have, we have a very as you see on the far end, you have a very distinct uh, uh, coordinated mass of. 205 can, can be used for uh, quantitation and, and actually identification of the uh, these serpents. Uh, 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 next slide, please. And here you see actually the curve uh, for the uh, for these compounds for this serpent. And uh, again, uh, the, uh, we could uh, detect this thing at the, to the very low concentration of the 400 parts of petroleum. So uh, this is, uh, uh, again, uh, next slide, please. So as we mentioned, uh, the PTRMS would be a great uh, tool uh, uh, for measuring terpenes, especially outdoor. Uh, uh, and uh, we'll talk about it more and more. A lot of uh, uh, counties, municipalities, when they, they have a, a high growth of this, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, they're growing, growing these, uh, these uh, plants, uh, uh, they are thinking about having a, a monitor or uh, uh, or uh, stop them uh, from releasing to the atmosphere or even coming up with the permits. Now, when it comes to the actual medical marijuana, it is done inside. And inside you are talking about uh, huge uh, greenhouses. And these greenhouses, uh, uh, they are uh, the obvious, obviously, uh, this is a more indoor air quality problem. And uh, um, there haven't been anything from OSHA yet, but uh, the people in these warehouses or the greenhouses, sometimes they work 10 to 12 hours a day and they are exposed uh, to these serpents. So what as our jelly group we're recommending to do a traditional uh, TO17 or TO15 using a summa canister or a ther thermal resorption tube for analysis uh, uh, of these compounds. Next slide. Uh, here you see a typical chromatogram of the terpenes using a, a TO17. Uh, actually, this is a 10, 10 nanogram. We're getting a very well separation of these terpenes actually using a TO17. Uh, it, 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 it is uh, working out uh, uh, really uh, good uh, uh, using a, 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 a thermal desorption tubes. And next slide. And showing you here uh, the same thing, a couple of the different terpenes actually. You see the the curve uh, for uh, camphor and beta carophylin actually, and you see a very linear uh, calibration. Uh, it goes down to uh, subparts uh, per billions actually. Next slide. 
And here is the mass spectrometer, uh, the mass spec for these two compounds. Again, as you can see, uh, uh, very good identification, uh, uh, good detection. It's a great, uh, great way uh, to uh, uh, measure the concentration of the uh, turpins uh, in indoor air. Next slide. Now, uh, in conclusion, uh, there are lack of data in spite of public nuisance. I mean, uh, there is a public nuisance. A lot of neighborhoods are complaining uh, uh, due to the smell and what health effect uh, uh, this will have on the residents uh, uh, close to these cultivation centers. Uh, you know, we know terpenes, you could take it uh, 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 through the ingestion. What about through inhalation? Is that going to cause any kind of the, uh, uh, any kind of damage. Uh, or, uh, so this is something uh, definitely uh, needs to be uh, studied. Uh, and there are no kind of study describing the influence of these uh, anthropogenetic activities and emission from plants uh, with or around the grower facilities and impact on the public health. And this lack of uh, data and understanding of what is this new industry will have on the public, both indoor and outdoor. Again, uh, as we mentioned, this industry is going to grow by fivefold in the next five years. So it is that something that we really need to pay attention to it and find out and uh, uh, come up uh, with, uh, with solutions uh, of uh, 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 how to avoid uh, these serpents in air. Next slide. Again, uh, I'd like to uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for uh, inviting me to this uh, uh, conference and giving me the opportunity uh, to present uh, 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 terpenes in air. And uh, even though this is uh, not uh, the current time, it's not an issue, but if in a couple of years you start uh, having clients and uh, asking you uh, uh, for analysis of terpenes in the air, Remember where you heard it first. Uh, thank you very much from me, uh, myself, and our JD uh, group. Thank you.